You are now listening to the Be Your Own Hashtag Love Goals podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. We just want you to remember that every person, regardless of identity, wants these three things, belonging, authenticity, and love. And after a decade of partnership, we've learned to co-create these things and so much more. So from wherever you're listening, we're going to go on a journey of becoming our own hashtag love goals. Now let's get into this episode. You are now listening to the Be Your Own Love Goals podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. Thank you all so much for being here. Tiffany, you, you look beautiful Thank in your you. life. Thank you so much. I'm loving it. I remember <laughs> when you did that photo shoot this summer yeah. with the photographer that reached out to you. Mm-hmm. What was her name, by the way? Her name was Isabel. Yeah. It's Isabel. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's like in school yep. studying photography and mm-hmm. art. And she really wanted to work with you to shoot some cool photos. Yes. I never got to link up with her. But yes. uh She's Isabel. actually in Austin. She's in Austin. Yes. Oh, we could have met up with her in Austin. Yeah. Oh, that would have been dope. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Isabel, if you're listening, uh, your photography is amazing. <laughs> yes. If anybody hasn't seen those photos, please go to Tiffany's Instagram, mm-hmm. Tiffany the Empress. B. That's three E's. So the T H E E E M P R E S S. Tiffany the Empress. Yeah. On Instagram, see those pictures mm-hmm. because they were phenomenal. Thank you. I call them your Earth Mother Goddess. Earth Mother uh, Goddess. Your mother's journey. Mm-hmm. Your Empress mm-hmm. uh, photo shoot. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful, yeah. breathtaking photos of you just in nature. Uh, really grounding, yeah. walking around with your shoes off. Oh my God, yes. The videos were very enchanting. <laughs> I loved all of it. You yeah. know, I'm like super into all things mm-hmm. like spirituality. Mm-hmm. And uh, what stood out to me from that from that shoot was your, your presence. Mm. I know it was hard to do yes. to share just a different take on spirituality Mm. even if it's earthing and grounding Mm -hmm. uh it's not even a different take none of this is new to us Mm -hmm. as african-american people but i think so much of the rhetoric these days has been pushing black people especially within the church Mm -hmm. away from practices that are ancestral to us Mm -hmm. so i've heard rhetoric about how you shouldn't burn incense Or I've heard rhetoric about, you know, how you shouldn't do any kind of divination or how crystals is weird. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not. I've also, you know, heard many arguments about how meditation is you know, not necessary. Mm -hmm. You should focus on praying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have some really, you know, interesting conversations Mm -hmm. about that, which we should come back into Mm -hmm. this episode. And it got me thinking a lot about your own personal journey. Yes. I have my own that we could definitely get into. Mm-hmm. But I think for you, you made this post recently. Yeah, I did. And I was very proud of you. Yeah. I think you said, I'm finally coming out of this, the spiritual closet. I'm coming now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You wanted the world to know. I wanted the world to know. I think it was very courageous to do that Mm -hmm. and i know so many people can relate to that experience i think especially as a queer person growing up and getting these messages about who god is supposed to be Mm -hmm. who the divine is supposed to be in your life and this depiction of god as uh what is it fickle Mm -hmm. this depiction of god as a god who does not love or appreciate people's queerness. Mm-hmm. And if we, it's, it was a challenge you yes. said in the post to reconcile with the guy that you came to understand in your own personal journey mm-hmm. as being unconditional love Yes, at the core of most religious doctrines yes. that have a monotheistic view of God. Mm-hmm. God is love. 
Period. So it was hard to reconcile what you were taught Mm -hmm. with what you really believed as your faith. Right. And as central to your faith. Right. So it was courageous to say that out loud. Mm -hmm. But I know that it resonated with so many people, so many queer people Mm -hmm. who grew up in the church, Mm -hmm. have since been separated from the church, but still practice spirituality or Mm -hmm. want to practice spirituality, Mm -hmm. want to have a relationship Mm -hmm. with the God of their understanding Mm -hmm. and want to to know still mm-hmm. that they are unconditionally loved exactly. by something larger than themselves. Exactly. That was powerful to me. Yeah. So I wanted to start this episode <laughs> off by saying that. Yes. And I'd love for us to just jump into this episode talking about your journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could talk about mine, but I, I almost want to say not to, even to compare journeys. Mm-hmm. I won't say that. Mm-hmm. But to say that your journey is is particularly profound because you started in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Baby. And so when you think about the deep south, mm-hmm. I say this all the time. I never saw cotton fields until I went <laughs> through on yeah. our way to Orangeburg. Yeah. Uh, and I tears welled up. Mm-hmm. So when I think about the deep south, the importance of the black church to many people as a source of liberation. Yes. For black people in times of struggle and real oppression mm-hmm. and the fear of violence and death, mm-hmm. not to mention during our relationship, uh, the church in Charleston, mm-hmm. the Charleston massacre yeah. happened mm-hmm. uh, at that church. And so when I think about the black yeah. church's foundation for black people as a place of liberation, of safety, to know as a black queer woman, you grew up yes. in a, a space that you then had to leave because it was no longer safe for you. Yeah. I could, I'm getting emotional even thinking about that right now. Yeah. How generationally that can bring up a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you tell your own story, mm-hmm. but it's particularly profound to me. And I want to yeah. hear more about your foundations in your spiritual journey, yes. how that started, yes. and then where you are now. So I'm going to step back and let <laughs> Tiffany talk to you all for a while. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, Mo. I feel like you recounting this photo shoot in my journey in the ways that you just did definitely has my eyes tearing up a little bit. And I'm going I'm to try to get through this episode without wrecking my face and my makeup. Uh, but I will say that that photo shoot was liberating in ways that I did not even realize. Yeah. And it was the first time that I had really leaned in publicly. Yeah. To what I have been practicing, integrating, living and healing for years now at this Mm -hmm. point. And the choice of outfit, the choice to not wear shoes, the choice to, literally be in a meditative state during this photo shoot was like it boggles my mind to this day that I actually did that in front of another person that I yeah. don't have an intimate relationship with yeah and so to have that experience and Isabel was such an amazing curator of that experience to have it posted on social media it was like a test, right? Okay. So I was like, I'm going to take these pictures and I'm going to post it. I'm not going to really go there, but yeah. I'm going to just post it. And it got pretty good reception, but I honestly wasn't, I wasn't super upfront or honest about that journey, what it was like doing the photo shoot. So I realized yeah. I dipped my toe in to see how things were. Yeah. Um. And so to your earlier point, For most, I would say for a lot of Black people, especially in the South, the church, the Black church is a pillar. Mm. It has always been a pillar. You know, you have family and you have church. And for a lot of people, family is church, right? Mm -hmm. And so you go to church every Sunday. You might go to Bible study. You might have these other meetings throughout the week at church. And so a lot of my childhood friends, church. Yeah. A lot of these affective kinships, church, aunties, yeah. church uncles, like all yeah. types of people. And that was one of my first communities outside yeah. of my family. Like before yeah. like before school, it even is church. Mm-hmm. So I spent so much time at church, made very meaningful relationships at church. And the older I got, 
you know, the more knowledge I attain, the more I ask mm-hmm. questions, the more I'm like, yeah, hmm, this doesn't really sit right. Yeah. And I ask questions and, you know, all of that. And it didn't, it wasn't really until the end of high school to college where I really started to go on my own journey of self-discovery that I was like, hmm, all of this is not sitting right with me. Yeah. Right. I went my freshman year of college and I joined a campus ministry and I was like, oh, you know, this is cool. I want to stay connected. Like church is important to me. Like I love the community. I love the spirituality. I love aspects of church. And so I still wanted to be connected. But once I attended that campus ministry freshman year, I got, it was illuminated to me the parts of church that were very, yeah. I don't like this. Same. I do not like this. I'll say really quick. Yeah. That was my experience too <laughs> with campus ministry. Oh my god! I think we went, I me and my sister, you know, we grew up the mm-hmm. children of a uh, of reverend mm-hmm. and, but we didn't grow up in a denomination where people were outright talking yeah. about queer people. Mm-hmm. We were just kind of invisible. And going to the campus ministry, we kind of wanted to keep going every Sunday. We got a, we're like very intellectual. So we yeah. get a lot out of theology. Yes, like we sure. just like to understand mm-hmm. different ways of looking at the larger mm-hmm. universe. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, us thinking campus ministry is certainly going to be non-denominational. Like we grew up in the Disciples of Christ Church. Mm-hmm. Not the case. Yeah. So I think one Sunday somebody, the... I don't know if it was a visiting minister, campus mm-hmm. minister, probably should have reported at mm-hmm. the time said something that was very offensive toward oh, wow. uh, LGBTQ plus people. And I said, I'm never mm. going back. Wow. And uh, that basically stopped me going to church on campus. Now imagine students, young people mm-hmm. eager to go to church mm-hmm. on a campus, mm-hmm. taking themselves every Sunday without their parents, even telling them they have mm-hmm. to go and mm-hmm. they experience something that makes them not even yeah. want to go back. So where do you even put your faith? Exactly. You have to begin a spiritual journey. So exactly. much like you, I, I really resonate with that. Yes. Continue with your story. Yeah. So this campus ministry, at, at this point, I wasn't really as connected to my uh, identity as an LGBTQ person. Yeah. However, the reception towards things that I felt were quite simple, like pledging a sorority mm. entering Greek life were very frowned upon. And yeah. there was a lot of judgment. And I was like, yeah. okay, wait, like I'm just becoming a part of a sisterhood here. Yeah. And it was so much resistance. So yeah. many people that, you know, questioned whether it was a cult or whether yeah. I was going to not love Jesus anymore. Like I just crazy. Things. Yeah. And so I didn't honestly stick around to see if there was any other sort of offensive behavior that was happening there. Yeah. So I had that experience in college. And again, I'm still like, I am so connected to black church. There are so many elements I love. Like if there was a church that just did praise and worship all for a whole hour, count me in. Okay. Nineties praise and worship. I'm there. So I love a lot of the aspects So I started going to a local church here in Atlanta every Sunday. The bus would come, pick us up. Um, Like some of the church mothers would make us uh, dinner. It was very beautiful. As college students, you know, I'm not close to home. They made a Sunday dinner and we would have a good church experience. Now, the experience was great. You know, we did a lot of extra things even outside of church service. I will say, though, as I came into my own identity as a queer person, Mm -hmm. I began to question my receptivity in that space. And so I took steps back. Yeah. You know, there weren't any explicit, like, homophobic behavior, but there also wasn't any explicit outright celebration. celebration. So I was like... I kind of know how this traditionally goes. So I'm going to take a step back. Yeah. And it was so painful. Yeah. I mean, you, I go from going to church all the time to yeah. like nothing. Yeah. Right. And so I had to go on a very intentional internal journey of like, what 
your spirituality going to look like for me? Yeah. And so I'll pause you right there Mm -hmm. because I think that that shift is significant. Yeah. I think that that's the place in which we met. Yeah. Where we both had this severing, let's Mm -hmm. say after campus ministry, Mm -hmm. after different experiences on campus. uh, We had this like, okay, this Mm -hmm. is not... First, it was very different for me from the yeah. church that I grew up in, which was pretty non-denominational. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't grow up, I would say, in a in a church environment, though I was the type of person because because my mom's a reverend, yeah. I was at the church all of the time. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the requirement for everybody. So I didn't grow up in that uh, traditional black church where I would say everybody is tarrying for the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit the day mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. and then they're going into church the next day. Oh, like we're or not... No. Yeah, I wasn't in that. So mm-hmm. everybody's obligation wasn't to be at church all of the time. Mm-hmm. You kind of like it was actually our motto was come as you are. Mm-hmm. So even if you came in off the street and you didn't have clothes or food, come as you, you are. Were right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, clean clothes or food mm-hmm. or whatever. You were welcome. Mm-hmm. It was that was the motto. Uh, our pastor was actually very involved in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. He helped start Rainbow Push in Chicago Mm -hmm. with uh, Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. His name was Reverend James L. Demas. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was very, very involved. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I remember growing up and seeing Farrakhan come and Mm -hmm. they have meetings. I remember seeing um, different political figures. I think we had like a banquet one time and Michelle Obama came and did a talk. He was very involved in politics. Mm -hmm. And our, our mission for the church was to be a church that is involved in the community, mm-hmm. seeking to involve the community in the church. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was this bilateral process yeah. of helping the world. It was like very mission driven. Mm-hmm. So it had to become as you are. Mm-hmm. Um, evangelism and other things were very a part of that experience, mm-hmm. but from a very compassionate um, unconditionally loving place. Mm-hmm. So imagine me going to college now, again, though queer people were not talked about in that space, I still have yet to experience any lack of acceptance when I've gone back to that space. True. When I've gone back and my appearance has been changing, I've had people outright be like, you are welcome here. Mm-hmm. So I have not had the experience yeah. at that home base mm-hmm. that I'm sure. I mean, you could have people that are saying things behind the scenes. I'm not privy to that. My parents are really involved. They've actually had direct conversations. It's still a really great mm-hmm. uh, space to be mm-hmm. in. But fast forward, we're meeting. We both have had these experiences Mm -hmm. on campus that are very different from our uh, backgrounds Mm -hmm. and pretty intensely negative or antagonistic toward queer people. Uh, So we're meeting each other. We're falling in love. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out uh, our own theology. And it was never a question with uh, the two of us. Mm -hmm. I'd already done that work with somebody Mm -hmm. else that Mm -hmm. I've been in a relationship (laughs) with. Won't go into details there. But there was not a back and forth. I think we both understood God loves us yep. unconditionally. unconditionally. He created us as we are. Mm-hmm. There's no question. Mm-hmm. Even when people are like, God doesn't make mistakes. How could you be trans? God mm-hmm. created me as a trans person in his lifetime very intentionally. Yes. This is an intentional part of my journey. Yes. And I believe that from the core of my being. Mm-hmm. And I've sat with many people in, in therapy over the years uh, as clients who are struggling in the same ways I've been struggling on campuses in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling them what I wanted to hear Mm -hmm. when I was their age Mm -hmm. and we cry together. Mm -hmm. And I remember those moments being so impactful, Mm -hmm. knowing that so many of our community just want to know that we are loved unconditionally and that we are not a mistake. Mm -hmm. How we love is not wrong. Mm -hmm. And so many of us are getting messages like that. So we meet each other and we realize our theology not only our theology, but our love philosophies mm-hmm. are, aligned. are aligned. And I think that began the foundation of us exploring spirituality mm-hmm. together as a Black queer couple yes. and really starting to root in what we believe. Mm-hmm. That's what's become the foundation for our relationship, mm-hmm. the foundation for our family. Yes. Uh, because, yeah, I won't say more about that, but I think it's so necessary that our journey kind of started in this way because we didn't do a wrestling back and forth Mm -mm. about whether or not it's okay to be us. Mm -hmm. And that's okay if that was the case. Again, Mm -hmm. I said I did this already with somebody Mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. So I came to the table prepared, ready to build with you. I already knew that the foundation was unconditional love. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation for all things. For all things. 
So I said a lot there. Yeah. I'm curious for you as we began to, um, so we were living in Chicago at a point, mm-hmm. and I remember us going to Trinity on the South Side, another yeah. very politically active church. Yeah. The pastor is the Reverend Otis Moss, mm-hmm. the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss. Mm-hmm. Uh, is he the third? He, yep. Okay. Three. Yeah. yeah. Reverend Dr. Otis Moss the yeah. third. Then we had Jeremiah Wright was the previous pastor. Um, very politically active church, very mm-hmm. present in the community. The Obamas went there mm-hmm. prior to moving to DC. Mm-hmm. So it's very like present church in the community in Chicago. Mm-hmm. We went we went there for a time. Yeah. And uh we loved our experience. Mm-hmm. I remember we even went to Bible study. Yes. I'm curious for you, uh, if you remember, because I don't. Yes. <laughs> What made us want to start going to Bible study? I think it was like a foundations of the Bible kind of class or liberation theology basics class, I think. It was. And we've talked in previous episodes about, for me, how in a romantic partnership, how spirituality and how spiritually connecting how much spiritual connection matters to me when it comes to intimacy, right? And I won't go on my whole story that I told before, but what does remain is that when we are able to be aligned on something that is so like, not necessarily meta, but that is so like in the soul realm of things that is just connecting on a different level, not just physically. Like we see each other spiritually. It is like, it just feels magical. Right. Yeah. And so us going to church, you know, going home, having after church naps and all that good stuff. (laughs) Focus on the wrong things. I asked you a question about Bible study. No, I'm saying, so that (laughs) created like this, I want more of this. I love, being able to connect in this way spiritually. So let's do this Bible study together. And so you can get more after Bible study naps. I mean, maybe. And more than anything, it was learning together, Mm -hmm. being a part of this community of other people. We met some really great people in that class and we learned a lot. I also am just like an avid learner. You are too. And so I love learning new things. I love being the person that raises my hand and answers yeah. the question. Like, I love all that. It was a time that aligned with our schedules very well. And we learned so much in that class. It was yeah. so, I look forward to it every week. Yeah. And so we made that choice because we were really enjoying the community of, you know, the larger worship service and then wanted to dive deeper into mm-hmm. some of this liberation theology, which I still hold a lot of that knowledge very near and dear to my heart to this day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I just remember it was so fond of that space. I remember being able to just be like, I'm Mo. I use they, them, or he, him pronouns. Yes. And it wasn't weird. I think that they just went with it. I think even us showing up as a couple, it was yeah. no question. I never, we were like, ne- sometimes I don't even think about the fact that we were together because it was such a space where that didn't matter. Yeah. And for it to a be, Trinity is one of the most historic it's black blackity, churches. Black, black, black. It is a black church in the south side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. It is like historic there. It is one of the largest congregations. Mm-hmm. So you're not, I wasn't necessarily expecting the level of reception yes, and, and normal. Honestly. But I think that that matters for the pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the pastors matter. They've mm-hmm. worked to cultivate that space, to talk openly from the pulpit mm-hmm. about everybody being unconditionally loved Mm -hmm. and accepted Mm -hmm. um so and it it just mattered Mm -hmm. so i never questioned that in Mm -hmm. that space Mm -hmm. i never got negative reception Mm -hmm. we always got this positive reception and we were welcomed every single week Mm -hmm. uh so that's i feel was very healing as you're saying and connecting but healing to know that there is a space for us somewhere Mm -hmm. we don't live in chicago anymore but i'm optimistic about being able to find more spaces like that Mm -hmm. because if i can go into a very traditional black church and know that a pastor is leading a flock toward unconditional love and acceptance of all people Mm -hmm. i know that that exists elsewhere and or i know how to replicate that right Right. In the communities that I exist in. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just very grateful for that space for to heal, you know, some of these ruptures that occurred mm-hmm. in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so I agree, it was very connecting, very grounding. Um, I think 
closer toward 2020, mm-hmm. we began another leg of this spiritual yeah. journey. Really? Many yeah, <laughs> many. As we embarked upon, uh, well, I would say more so 2019, as we embarked upon the fertility journey yeah. and really connecting, we really, if out of, it, maybe it wasn't out of nowhere. I think these inclinations have been with me and certainly you our whole lives. We just began to feel connected to Nova before she was born. Yes. And in wanting to connect more with this energy we knew was forming, uh, we had many moments. So, for instance, where Tiffany and I were talking about potential names for our daughter and we are like messaging back and forth very, very quickly saying this name, that name, mm-hmm. whatever. At the same time, we each get messages yep. from one another saying Nova. Nova. Yep. And we were like, that's, that's it. Her name. That's her name. <laughs> Not to mention my mom goes to work and she's talking to coworkers. They're trying to guess the name of her future grandchild. And somebody, she says she's going to tell you her name because mm-hmm. she's been telling other people. This mm-hmm. is a true story. Mm-hmm. Other people guess this name. This name is not common in 2019. And we hadn't told anybody. We hadn't told anyone. So your my mom, mom didn't was, know at that point. My mom didn't know. Mm-hmm. She didn't know. Mm-hmm. So the coworker says, her name is Nova. Go back and ask them if your grandbaby's name is Nova. <laughs> she says, is her name Nova? And I said, we were floored. Lord. We were like, that's confirmation. She is mm-hmm. really out here telling people her name. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Tiffany and I, that's mm-hmm. this begins the spiritual journey. Like, yeah. okay, this child is communicating with us in a spiritual way mm-hmm. before she is here. She's a talker now. So mm-hmm. it was like, okay, mm-hmm. we really need to connect with this energy, this intuition that is like alive mm-hmm. um, in our lives already. Mm-hmm. So we begin to meditate more mm-hmm. to really connect mm-hmm. to her uh, beyond would, this realm. I would even say before mm-hmm. we um, conceived preparing for conception and IVF and all of that, we were still very much connected, connected and wanting, you know, for me in particular, I want my body to feel like, okay, and ready and Mm -hmm. grounded to undergo this procedure, like to start this journey physically and also finding ways to really be grounded even before conceiving. And so it created a space a home that right. I think really allowed her to thrive. I just wanted to add that in there, even yeah. before she was conceived. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think we started meditating, yeah. doing Reiki around mm-hmm. this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you were starting to do yoga, mm-hmm. uh, really getting deeper into uh, understanding the legacy and the journey of our mm-hmm. ancestors, why we're here in this lifetime together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To do this work of mm-hmm. building family and community mm-hmm. that transcends all of these boxes. Yes. Uh, so we were beginning to understand that as part of our journey. And the Nova coming to our lives kind of burst all of this spirituality mm-hmm. wide open. Mm-hmm. Uh, because she was, during that pregnancy, I felt like we had so many moments where we started to smell the same food. That oh was, no, we were literally, if you're in this room right now, there's no food cooking. That- those would, Panera smells that I had. It all was the, the time. burger on the highway for me that one time. We're like, do you smell a burger? Yeah. You're like, I smell a burger. Like mm-hmm. it's so it was so many weird moments mm-hmm. like that where we're like, there is this spiritual we started to understand that there's there's this connection amongst people that mm-hmm. defies logic. Mm-hmm. It defies like the five senses. Yeah. And it goes beyond what we can visibly see. Mm-hmm. And so there's there's so much more to life beyond what we understand. And when you think about our spiritual foundation in Christianity, this is not unheard of. So much of Christianity is the mythical, the spiritual, the beyond Mm -hmm. the five senses. When Mm -hmm. you think about the miracles that Jesus performed, when you think about raising the dead, um, uh, healing the blind, Mm -hmm. turning fish and loaves of bread to feel the to feed the multitude turning mm-hmm. water into wine all of this is like the spiritual beyond the regular everyday imagination it's transcendent mm-hmm. and so that being our foundation helped us to really begin to understand that the spiritual intuition that we yeah. all possess 
is alive and active if you're ready to mm -hmm. to to connect with it. Mm -hmm. So this begins to relay or just add on to some of our spiritual foundations mm -hmm. during this time mm -hmm. and just beginning to like deepen our practice of meditation and stillness, especially during the pandemic. We spent a lot of time mm -hmm. releasing ourselves of the worry of of in the burden of capitalism and yeah. like, I have to get this done right now. I think so many of us slow down in this mm -hmm. way. But that I think that burden of capitalism was one of the biggest blocks for me towards spirituality and just following my yes. intuition. Because for so many of us generationally through slavery, we had to focus on that pro being productive yep. as our highest goal, mm -hmm. which is very counter to how we were born. If you look at any child, their goal is fun, joy, spirituality, mm -hmm. being at, in their own authenticity. Yes. Productivity as the goal is very misaligned. Mm -hmm. And so releasing this burden to like constantly yeah. have to produce freed me up to just be. Yes. And when I was able to just be, I was able to connect with something so much bigger yes. than myself. I totally agree. And the last thing I'll say before I give this mic back mm -hmm. to you, because I know you'll agree with me, is that meditation and prayer are hand in hand. Hand in hand. We get so many messages that meditation is not necessary. You need to pray. Prayer is when you what, Tiffany? Prayer is when you talk to God, the higher being, the universe. Whatever, the God of your understanding. The God of your understanding. It's Meditation a, is when you listen. Listen for the answer. What listen are you praying for, for if you're not exactly. listening for the answer? It's a stillness. It's a being. It's just being. Absolutely. Say that one more time so that everybody hears you very quickly. <laughs> Prayer is when you talk to the God of your understanding. And meditation is when you listen for the answers. What are we doing if we are not listening for the <laughs> answers to the things we're asking for? Sometimes we just talk too much. So that's what I learned in this process yes. of deepening my spiritual practice and really being in stillness mm -hmm. is that there are so many ways to incorporate the foundations that I had with these ancestral understandings that yeah. also got us through those challenging times. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. We, we have, not that we've lost a lot, we have lost a lot because of capitalism yeah. and this need for productivity. We've also gained a lot too. We've gained this insight mm -hmm. into how we can utilize uh, our, our gifts mm -hmm. and our spirituality to really manifest and create the lives that we want to right. live. That's why we are living beyond slavery now, mm -hmm. beyond segregation, beyond because there were dreamers and ancestors who had the spiritual faith to push beyond the ordinary exactly. and believe with this supernatural, if you will, mm -hmm. ability to know that their dreams could be manifested. We are living in an answer prayer. Come on. We are living in the manifested dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King, exactly. Malcolm X, and everybody else who fought for mm -hmm. our freedom. Mm -hmm. That is a spirituality that transcends modern thinking about Christianity. Yes. The one that is inclusive of all people. All people. So as a black queer couple, and I said I was going to give this mic back to Tiffany. <laughs> I know I've been talking a lot. But I can, you know, Tiffany jokes on me. She says I could preach. But as a black queer couple, it's important. To, it was important to us that we found spirituality yeah. and all of that to be able to nicely bridge mm -hmm. the foundations of our teaching with the practice. So the yes. theory and the practice. Yes. So I see the foundations in Christianity as theory and mm -hmm. theology. And I see spirituality as the, the practice. practice. Mm -hmm. And it can be what you want to make mm -hmm. it. It really can. And I feel like, thank you for saying all of that. I feel like you know, you talked about the different legs of our journey. And I would say that the pandemic and our relationship to even capitalism was another leg of it. And yeah. so having that opportunity to be at home and to really like just be with yourself in your own home was even a deeper immersion into that spirituality that we had already been exploring. And I mean, we can have a whole other episode on our journey from pandemic to now. Yeah. And the and I will say that the beauty of all of this is that our journey looks different from what it had yeah. did five years ago. It's evolved. 
yeah. you know, we've remained connected through that. And when there has been difficulty, we've been able to lean on that spirituality, lean mm-hmm. on that connection to get through some really difficult and challenging moments. Yeah. And I love that we have been creating our own spirituality goals. Yeah. Like literally like in so many regards to how we wanted our daughter to have a blessing. Um, We didn't want a traditional christening, which no shade to anyone who does that. I think that those ceremonies are beautiful, Absolutely. but because of our journey and you know what we wanted to have that moment look like it was really important for us to do a non-traditional ceremony. We call it a light ceremony. We call it a light ceremony. And we'll we'll have to share. um, Yeah. Tell them a little bit about that light ceremony. I mean, we invited our parents into that process because both of our parents are, well, my mom is a reverend, your dad is a reverend. Uh, So talk about that. Uh, So, The light ceremony was essentially a moment to, one, honor the ancestors. So honor all of our own personal ancestors and all of those that came before us um, to offer a blessing to Nova, to our family, and to the village that surrounded her and all of us. We had our closest friends and family there. We were all white. We were all white. We, we had, had our libations. We had some... Libations is an ancestral, a, a, a Black diasporic ancestral practice of pouring water into a plant, a living plant mm-hmm. in honor of the ancestors. And when you do that, you say the name of ancestors out loud, mm-hmm. who you want to call into that space to surround you in that community so that the circle around that uh, around Nova in the time. Mm-hmm. So the circle around Nova extended beyond mm-hmm. just this generation mm-hmm. and the generations living, but into seven generations past yes. and onward. Yes. So that the circle around her is in the this realm and in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the libations is in honor of the ancestors and it invites mm-hmm. them, their energy into this space, into this loving, benevolent community. So you say their names. And then you say, Ashe, you mm-hmm. say, and so it is. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was one ceremony that I loved. Mm-hmm. Uh, Everyone had candles. Everybody had we candles. We had um, some kente cloth sashes. <laughs> yeah. It was a, such a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. I had to drop some of the um, footage in our social media after this episode, but it really spoke to doing something that aligned with where we were spiritually yeah that was so giving that yeah. no one that many of the people present may not have thought of they but never got did. so much right they still talk about it to this day we were How worried beautiful. to ask our parents yeah, we were. to lead this because mm-hmm. we were like uh mm-hmm. we don't want it to be a traditional christening now i remember my dad even asking is it okay if i say god if i say jesus and we're like, like yeah yeah, yeah we're but just we just want you, yeah we <laughs> we just want you to bring the uh frankincense and myrrh yes. and uh your holy oil that he always has on, on him. him anyway we had some too mm-hmm. we put some of that on nova when she was born we can't go into all of our yeah. spiritual practices, but that light ceremony ended up being so beautiful. I remember your grandmother was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandmother had passed away at this time yeah. already, but your grandmother was there. And I remember, I think she was probably in tears at a point yeah. and it was just so special to her. She mm-hmm. talked about how beautiful that was. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so grateful that she could make it mm-hmm. for that mm-hmm. because you know, you've really, you know, there's something deeply resonant, even in a spiritual practice that is not within a church. Mm -hmm. If a black grandmother from South Carolina is moved. Right. Yeah. So I was like, we are hitting here in this bridge. Mm -hmm. There is a possible bridge between Christianity, spirituality, and the practice that is like open and expansive for all people. Mm-hmm. Because in that space, in that circle, nothing, none of that matter. All these mm-hmm. identities passes away, mm-hmm. pass away. You're just a spiritual being mm-hmm. in space with other spirits. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about spirituality. Was yeah. there anything else from that ceremony you wanted to highlight? I know we had the candles. Uh, 
I think the the collective nature of the ceremony, the naming of the ancestors, it was a very collaborative mm-hmm. um, experience. So people just kind of said names out loud, ancestors. And it was just the silence in the room between each person naming an ancestor was just just beautiful. Like I feel like transported back to that moment, even talking about it right now. And so um I am very proud of that moment. I am proud of us for even having the courage to step outside of the tradition to yeah. do this ceremony. But it was it was what we it was everything and more um of what we wanted that experience yeah. to look like. And I feel like Nova is living proof of the beauty and the blessing that was bestowed upon her and our whole village and our whole yeah. community in that ceremony. I feel like she remembers that mm-hmm. it was uh, during her first birthday weekend. Mm-hmm. And I think since then, birthdays are like extremely special to her. Oh she loves God. everybody's birthdays. Everybody. Uh, but she just, I feel that that was, must have been a core memory. core memory and the way that she connects to people and really is core community it's really symbolic of what we knew was going to be her personality. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, we were like, we're doing a light ceremony. ceremony. We are going to do a spiritual practice that is a ritual that really uh, envelops this baby in love Mm -hmm. because it really does take a village. Mm -hmm. And when they say that, they're not saying that for play, Mm -hmm. but it takes a village. Those small the small ways in which your village extends love Mm -hmm. is spirituality for children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before they understand who God is, they are looking at us to be unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And when you have more than just you as Mm -hmm. parents doing that, that child is like swallowed up in love. Mm -hmm. So how could that kid not just go out into the world and be loved Mm -hmm. when they are stewing in that, like being manifested in that, being sugar coated and wrapped in that mm-hmm. their whole lives. Yeah. That's what we want for Nova. That's what we want for other children. Mm-hmm. If uh, Tiffany is so kind as to bear it, be uh, another portal. I am <laughs> open to being a portal. The question is the timeline, but you know, it, you know, I'm getting more and more warmed up to, to yeah. the idea very, very soon. Y'all will be one of the first to know. So we didn't even get into that. That I have to be another episode. I feel what like it this was episode like for... deserves a part two. Yeah, it really does because we could go on and on. I think spirituality. If you really think about it, when we think about intimacy, so much of that is spirituality. And for yeah. us as a couple, as a family unit, yeah, that is, I mean, top three. Yeah, of our foundational things so to speak like that we carry with us every single day whether it's the five minutes we take and breathe and be mindful in the morning to the intention that we put behind our bedtime routine like yeah those things can be deeply spiritual Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be going to church every sunday like it just does not yeah i think specifically about your experience being Mm -hmm. a portal for life Mm -hmm. as like skyrocketing your spiritual journey and the preparation to motherhood sounds like another episode that's birthing the empress within it's gonna be a be your own love goals birthing the empress within kind of episode because it's so much we need to hear about that journey if you all want to hear about tiffany's journey of becoming a mother and how she nurtures other birthing people mm-hmm. through this rite of passage yes uh please reach out to tiffany at tiffany yes. the empress or on instagram that's three <laughs> e's the empress and uh reach out to her on instagram but also let us know in the comments and mm-hmm. things or uh reach out to us and send a message if you really are wanting more information about the work that she does because i think that that's another aspect of spirituality we yes. didn't get to yes. uh another part of spirituality that i didn't get to you have your own story we need a part two and mm-hmm. we need a part three we need more parts we need more parts this has been a beautiful episode mm-hmm. i hope that if you're listening that you feel encouraged in your spirituality mm-hmm. uh especially if you're a, a queer person if you're yes. a black queer person uh, this is just a bit of our journey 
we say be your own love goals, be your own spirituality goals. Yes. Uh, and keep coming back to us because we're going to offer you more on your own journey of explore, exploring your spirituality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you like this episode, don't forget to like this. Go follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Instagram. And don't be a stranger. Feel free mm-hmm. to be in our DMs. Send us messages. We love mm-hmm. connecting with people. We cannot stress that enough. Mm-hmm. There is no such thing as a stranger. <laughs> we came from churches that do passing of the peace. Come on. So it don't matter if we don't know you. Come and be loved. Okay? Mm-hmm. Tiffany, you want to say some love for them? And Thank you for that benediction, Ma. All right. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Let the sun rise <laughs> to greet you. May the wind <laughs> always be at your back. Okay? Have a great day. This has been Be Your Own Love Goes podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. Have a great day and be well. Bye. Bye. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Video episodes are on YouTube and Spotify. If you want your question included in an upcoming episode, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Be Your Own Love Goals or check out our website at lovegoespodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.